The top stories tonight in Y News. President Rodrigo Duterte continued to make rounds in the provinces ravaged by Typhoon Odette, promising cash aid and a steady delivery of food and water to locals. The Philippine Food and Drug Administration has approved the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use among children 5 to 11 years old. The Philippines is no longer at the last spot of the Bloomberg's monthly COVID-19 resiliency ranking. The World Health Organization has expressed concern over a number of COVID-19 booster programs across the globe, noting this may only prolong the global health crisis. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, December 23, 2021. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Harleen Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. Following the lashing of Typhoon Odette, where many households were affected, the Energy Regulatory Commission is directing distribution utilities to relax its collection of electric bills in the severely hit areas within the next two months. This report will tell us why. To help the typhoon victims recover from the effects of Typhoon Odette's devastation, the Energy Regulatory Commission, or ERC, has directed the distribution utilities to give their customers ample time in settling their electric bills. ERC Commissioner Florecinda Baldo de Gal says these include relaxing of disconnection notices to those who may not be able to pay on time, at least within the next two months. Makakasama na yan na dyan yung, uh, hindi mo na sila magdi-disconnect agad-agad dahil hindi mababayaran yung bayarin ngayong Desyembre at hanggang Enero. So sa pag-implementa, sila na ang uh, maaaring magbigay uh, ng detalye niyan sa kanilang consumer. Pero basically, that will be relaxation of the disconnection policy and at the same time, yung payment na hindi mababayaran on time, bayaran in a later time without penalty and interest. Meanwhile, the Department of Energy expects more areas in the ravaged regions to be energized over the weekend. Energy Undersecretary Wimpy Fuentebella says over 1,400 personnel from the power sector have been deployed in various parts of the typhoon hit areas for restoration efforts. The NGCP says they have restored 82 percent of the affected transmission lines. However, restoring the lines in Bohol remains a challenge. This as two special towers interconnecting Leyte and Bohol were toppled. NGCP explains bulk of the generation supply in Bohol comes from the main grid in Leyte area. Right now, ongoing po yung pag-aaral kung ano ang pinakamahusay na paraan para mapalitan itong mga towers na to at makontinue natin yung transmission service ng NGCP. Magkakaroon sila ng energization doon through island operation, utilizing internal no, yung mga embedded power generators doon by December 31. The National Electrification Administration also reports that over 1 million of the 3 million affected households from downed electric cooperatives have been energized. As we speak, uh, we have energized some mo a little more than 1.01 uh, million so it's about 30% and we have a remaining of around 2.5 million to be energized as far as households are concerned. The NGCP still has to restore 17 transmission lines in five areas that were heavily battered by Typhoon Odette. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The number of people who were reported dead due to the onslaught of Typhoon Odette has climbed to 258. Latest data from the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC, showed 47 persons were reported missing while 568 were hurt. A total of 2,196,432 people or 585,029 families were affected by the typhoon in 4,000 566 barangays in Mimarupa, Bicol, Western Visayas, Central Visayas, Eastern Visayas, Zamboanga, 
Northern Mindanao, Davao, Soksarjen, Caraga, and Bangsamoro region. The NDRRMC also reported a total of 136,369 damaged houses in the said areas. Five airports in affected areas have resumed operations. The NDRRMC said a total of 126 ports were reported non-operational or have suspended trips, of which 57 ports resumed operation. Around 1,513 passengers, 690 rolling cargoes, and five vessels were stranded. The cost of damage to agriculture was estimated at 1,152,834 uh, point 94, while 2 million and 537 million 507,000 in infrastructure. A total of 33 areas have been placed under a state of calamity, the NDRRMC said. President Rodrigo Duterte pledged the full support of the national government as he visited again provinces heavily damaged by Typhoon Odette. The chief executive directed the National Housing Authority to provide funding for thousands of homeless victims. Rosalie Cos reports. As promised, President Rodrigo Duterte, together with some of his cabinet officials, visited Siargao Island in Surigao del Norte as well as Dinagat Islands in Caraga region yesterday. This is to personally find out what communities need to recover from the impact of the calamity. These two provinces are among the severely hit by Typhoon Odette. The chief executive vowed to provide the necessary assistance to Typhoon victims. <laughs> Pinakalay, pinakadugay, kung ingnan si Gov, madugay ko na silang ingnan ako, naga, naga, naga silhig ba ko ba? Asan ako makuha? Di lang ako isulte, pero naan ako, naan ang kwarta. Pinakalayo, maabot na sa inyo, uh, huwibis. In Dinagat Islands, the President also met with the evacuees and local officials of the area and vowed to provide the necessary means to speed up the clearing operations and help residents reconstruct their homes. According to Acting Presidential Spokesperson and Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles, the National Housing Authority will provide housing assistance worth 100 million pesos to typhoon victims in Dinagat Islands, whose houses were partially and totally damaged. The government will also provide financial assistance through the Department of Social Welfare and Development and Department of the Interior and Local Government. Again, the palace assures the public the government works double time in its relief, recovery, and rehabilitation efforts to aid displaced families in hard-hit areas. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, relief operations in areas that were devastated by Typhoon Odette is in full swing with needed relief items delivered to areas in Bohol, Surigao, Leyte, Palawan, and Cebu. JP Nunez reports. The Philippine Coast Guard already delivered 500 sacks of rice, canned goods, noodles, and boxes of mineral waters in Dinagat Island, an area which was severely hit by Typhoon Odette. PCG also brought disaster kits, mat, blankets, sacks of neat clothes, medicines, and hygiene kits. Well, nagpapatuloy po yung ating operation, ang instruction po ni Secretary Artogade ay going round the, round the clock at abutin yung mga areas na kailangan abutin at mabigyan ng tulong. The 2,000 liters of gasoline and 16 portable generator sets for alternative supply of power brought by BRP Malabrigo was also delivered to Cebu and Bohol. Another PCG Marine vessel also sailed today en route to Pagasa Island to bring relief supplies and mineral water to around 300 families. BRP Capones carried hollow blocks and sacks of cements to Pagasa Island where a newly built Coast Guard station has been washed out. It was set for reconstruction. Well, kasama po ang Philippine Coast Guard sa kabuang pagkilos ng uh, gobyerno, no? Uh, sa amin po, siyam na barko po ang uh, na-deploy namin at naglalagari para magdala po ng relief at uh, tulungan yung mga kababayan natin uh, magbula po sa Visaya sa hanggang makarating po ng Mindanao at uh, maging din dito po sa, sa Palawan. 
Aside from PCG, the Philippine Navy also conducted feeding program in Dinagat Island and a charging station was also set for the residents affected by Typhoon. Meanwhile, C-130 plane of Philippine Air Force brought mobile treatment plant from Manila Water in Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu. This will convert raw water in the area into clean water which will be safe to drink. Military aircraft continues to send relief goods and conducts humanitarian efforts in other parts of Cebu and Palawan. Air Force Tactical Operations Group 8 continues its efforts to bring goods to typhoon victims in southern Leyte. The PCG, Philippine Navy, and Air Force will continue relief transport mission to aid severely hit areas until they recover from the calamity brought by Typhoon Odette. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, has approved Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccines for emergency use among children ages 5 to 11. Aiko Miguel will give us the details live. Uh, yes, uh, Aiko, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, William, good evening. Local experts have determined that the submitted data from Pfizer-BioNTech is sufficient for the emergency use authorization approval for children aged 5 to 11 years old. This is why the Food and Drug Administration already granted an EUA for Pfizer. FDA Director General Eric Domingo says Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for kids has high efficacy rate. About 90% sa mga batang 5 to 11 years old and at the same time, yung pong nakitang adverse events doon po sa clinical trial ay very mild lamang po no? katulad lamang ng ibang bakuna na natatanggap ng mga bata so konting siguro po may sinisina konting pananakit doon sa area ng injection pero wala pong nakitang any unusual or important safety signals para po ma hindi natin ibigay itong EUA the FDA, however, explained William that the government needs to procure a specific dose for Filipino children before its rollout to begin next year. Hindi po siya kapareho noong uh, dosage nung binibigay sa adult. Ito po ay mas mababang dosage at hindi lamang po yun, yung concentration din po ng vaccine ay mas mababa din po no? kaysa dun sa ginagamit sa adults ngayon. According to the Vaccine Experts Panel Chairperson, Technical Working Group for COVID-19 Vaccines, Dr. Nina Gloriani, they have submitted their recommendation to give Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines for all Filipino children aged 5 to 11 years old. Ito sa general recommendation, ang magiging ano na lang dyan, baka yung mga pediatric society natin o yung PIDSP na tinatawag, yung Pediatric Infectious Disease, Society of the Philippines may may have a position also kung sino dapat tunahin. Kasi doon sa 12 to 17, inuna natin yung may comorbidities, di ba? FDA and VEP assure they have thoroughly studied the safety and efficacy of Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines for children. This is why they are encouraging parents to have their children inoculated to protect them from COVID-19 infection brought by different COVID-19 variants. Meanwhile, William, the FDA also approved the EUA for oral antiviral pill Molnupiravir. Earlier results of the oral antiviral pill Molnupiravir showed it could have the chances of getting severe COVID-19 infection and death. The Philippines is among the countries participating in the global clinical trial Molnupiravir. According to medical experts and clinical investigators in the country, Molnupiravir is developed to combat COVID-19 variants like Omicron. Ito po ay pinapayagan natin ibigay sa mga pasyente with mild to moderate COVID disease. So hindi po ito pwede sa mga severe or yung mga nangangailangan na ng oxygen. Ito ay pwede lamang ibigay sa mga adults 18 years old and above na positive po for COVID-19 and meron pong risk factors for developing severe illness katulad po ng mga senior citizen o yung mga may comorbidities. William COVID-19 patients should have an intake of 2,800 two milligrams of molnupiravir daily for five days. According to FDA, the Department of Health, 
will provide guidelines following their administrative order on drugs under EUA in the Philippines. And that is the latest live. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you. Aiko Miguel reporting live from Quezon City. The National Task Force Against COVID-19 is looking to roll out mobile barangay to barangay COVID-19 vaccinations in the country. Janice and Henta will tell us why. Out of the over 109 million total population of the Philippines, only nearly 44 million Filipinos are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. This shows that the government still needs to reach a large number in order to vaccinate the entire eligible population of Filipinos. Because of this, the National Task Force Against COVID-19 plans to roll out barangay to barangay and house to house vaccination to reach millions who have yet to receive single dose of COVID-19 vaccines. Number one is to achieve the remaining milestone of 77 million, 90 million and the total population by next year. And then we will vaccinate the vaccinated by having yung tinatawag nating barangay to barangay at saka yung house to house. This idea of the National Task Force was derived from the style of General Santa City when the barangays designated their own vaccination sites in addition to the mobile vaccination facilities. Very effective pa lang po yung barangay to barangay. Ang ginawa po ng Gensang, 26 barangay. 26 rin ang vaccination site nila at meron pa po sila ng mga mobile vaccination site at meron din po tas nilang tatlong vaccination site. Talagang binumog po ng mga tao yung vaccination sa barangay Patima. At ang maganda po talaga, matama po yung sinasabi ni Sec. Anyo na dapat i-power natin ng barangay. According to Secretary Galvez, based on their observation, not everyone has the capacity to go to vaccination sites such as malls. This is why they are planning to bring the vaccination closer to residential areas or barangays. Some barangay officials also agreed on the said plan. Napakaganda ng ideya at ilapit sa barangay sa kanyang mga kabarangay ang vaccination. Maraming mga variants na lumalabas, kaya po mas maganda po kung ilalagay po sa bawat barangay ang ating mga babakuna. Upang sa ganun, maging accessible lahat para doon sa aming mga mamayan. Mas maganda yung sinasagawa na bye-bye bahay na bye-bye na vaccination at ang sinasagawa ang vaccination sa bawat barangay. Dahil dito, mas napapalapit sa mga residente at hindi na sila mahihirapan na magpabakuna at protection na ng kanilang mga pamilya at sarili. The NTF are now preparing possible guidelines for the barangay-to-barangay and house-to-house -house vaccination plan. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines today logged 288 more cases of COVID-19, pushing the nationwide tally of confirmed infections to 2,837,903. The Department of Health, or DOH, said the latest count brought the country's active cases to 9,251. Of these cases, 3,204 are mild, 3,393 are moderate, 1,797 are severe, 480 have no symptoms, and 377 are in critical condition. Meanwhile, total recoveries rose to 2,777,671 after 270 more patients recovered from the disease. COVID-related deaths, however, climbed to 50,981 with 65 new fatalities. All accredited testing laboratories in the country were operational on December 21, but five laboratories failed to submit data on time. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached 277,167,948, while the deaths have surged to 5,377,435, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The United States is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 51,546,004 and 812,069 respectively. In terms of infections, India follows with 34,765,976 cases and 478,759 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes third with 618,091 fatalities. 
From being the worst place during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Philippines has improved its resiliency ranking, edging up three places from the 53rd spot. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Amid the threat of the Omicron COVID-19 variant, the Philippines is faring better in its COVID-19 resiliency compared to Indonesia, South Africa, and Vietnam. The country previously ranked last, landing on the 53rd spot for three consecutive months. However, based on Bloomberg's COVID-19 resilience ranking, the Philippines is now on the 50th spot after quarantine restrictions eased, vaccination rates improved, and the positive test rate fell. The National Vaccination Operations Center welcomes the Philippines' ranking improvement. However, it is no reason to be less careful, especially with the Omicron threat really to prepare for the Omicron as soon as possible and we should not uh, let our guards down no? even though major low yung cases natin ngayon and we are very thankful for that. The country is currently under alert level 2 with less restrictions. More business establishments are reopening, making more opportunities for economic recovery. COVID-19 cases are also low, at least 45 million Filipinos are fully vaccinated, and the national government continues to ramp up its vaccination rollout to reach the 54 million target. Booster doses are being administered and the Food and Drug Administration has approved the vaccination for ages 5 to 11 year olds. NVOX says the agency already begun strategizing to prepare for the possible local transmission or possible surge of the Omicron variant. Secretary Galvez already called for a meeting with all the agencies, uh, the regional offices, and all the members of the task forces no, to address uh, and to make plans for the Omicron. Bloomberg, however, still reports Southeast Asia places lowest in the ranking for seven months in a row. Vietnam drops two places and is now last in the resiliency ranking after its export-dependent economy was hit by outbreaks, causing factories to shut down. Eileen Zerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Low Pressure Area, or LPA, being monitored outside the Philippine Area of Responsibility has dissipated. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says the LPA has weakened and is now a cloud cluster. Pagasa is not seeing any weather disturbance that may affect the country in the next two to three days. Meanwhile, the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ, is affecting southern Mindanao. The northeast monsoon will cause partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated light rains over Batanes and Babuyan Islands, while Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to the ITCZ or localized thunderstorms which may cause possible flash floods or landslides during severe thunderstorms. Meanwhile, residents in Quezon City can still convert their cash in their trash rather into cash. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. The Quezon City government hopes to encourage their constituents to be more prudent in caring for their environment. This is by segregating their trash, particularly those that can be recycled, which include single-use plastics, papers, cartons, and scrap metals. Quezon City Climate Change and Environmental Sustainability Department Head Andrea Villaraman explains that this will help minimize the garbage being disposed in landfills. And as a gratitude to the efforts of concerned residents, such recyclables may be used to redeem goods and services through a point system under the expanded Trash to Cashback program. Okay, so ang Trash to Cashback ay nilaunch ng city government para ma-incentivize yung mga tao sa kanilang pagre-recycle, pagsesegregate, so, ibig sabihin, kapag ka inayos nila yung pamamahala ng basura nila, pwede sila magkaroon ng environmental points. Yung environmental points, gagamitin nila pambili ng grocery o kaya pambayad ng kanilang utility bills. In the waste trading system, every kilogram of recyclable trash have corresponding environmental points depending on the type of material. To participate in the program, Quezon City residents need to initially register and their earned points will be credited in their account. Online, kailangan lang nilang maggawa ng app, be extra app. And then dun po, pwede silang bumili ng kanilang mga groceries, pwede silang magpa-deliver ng food, pwede silang mag-avail ng services. So meron lang silang kailangan i-register sa be extra app. 
Q citizen Marvin Zenerosa supports the program by segregating the plastic trash he collected from the delivery service that became prevalent amid the pandemic. Para hindi rin kumalat sa tawag nito sa kung saan saan yung basura. Tapos para mas segregate siya ng maayos na ma-recycle yung pwedeng pang-recycle tapos matapon yung hindi na sa tamang tapunan yung hindi na mapakinabangan. Further information about the Trash to Cashback program may be checked through the social media account of the Quezon City Climate Change and Environmental Sustainability Department. They may also inquire through their contact number 8988-4242-LOCAL-8348 or via email through climatechange at quezoncity.gov.ph. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. For the news abroad. As countries try to get booster rates up to deal with Omicron, WHO chief warns the world cannot boost its way out of the pandemic. Marvid Finn will tell us why live. Yes, Marvi, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. In a media briefing last night, WHO Chief Tedros insisted that the focus of immunization must remain on decreasing deaths and severe disease, while also expressing concern that blanket booster programs will exacerbate inequity and in global vaccine access. As the Omicron variant dominance threatens festivities across the world and governments in wealthy countries speedily rolled out booster campaigns, WHO Chief Tedros warned that third doses did not translate into a signal for celebrations. Blanket booster programs are likely to prolong the pandemic rather than ending it by diverting supply to countries that already have high levels of vaccination coverage, giving the virus more opportunity to spread and mutate. It's important to remember that the vast majority of hospitalizations and deaths are in unvaccinated people, not unboosted people. According to the recently released interim statement of the WHO and the Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization or SAGE, many countries are still far from reaching the 40% coverage target by the end of 2021, while other countries have vaccinated well beyond this threshold. Moreover, 120 countries had started implementing booster programs for a third or even a fourth shot in the case of Israel, but not one of them is a low-income country. While well, UN figures suggest that about 67% of people in high-income countries have had at least one vaccine dose, but not even 10% in low-income countries. There is now a renewed call for manufacturers and other countries to prioritize the COVAX program to get doses to needier nations and work together to support those who are furthest behind. But the WHO chief remains hopeful that 2022 will end the pandemic given the increased knowledge of the virus and effective tools to combat it with the addition of comprehensive implementation and equity. Marielle? Marvi, what is the WHO's recommendation for the administration of an additional dose? Marielle, WHO and SAGE recommended on Wednesday that additional doses should be targeted to the population groups at highest risk of serious disease, such as older adults and immunocompromised persons, as well as those necessary to protect the healthcare system. The WHO reminds that vaccine booster dose policy decisions should be based on evidence of individual and public health benefits and obligations to secure equitable global vaccine access. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Marvid Elfin, reporting live from Australia. Authorities in northern China ordered 13 million of its residents to stay home unless they have extenuating circumstances and permission from officials. RK Gorka reports why live. Good evening, RK. Please go ahead. Good evening, Mariel. China is on high alert now in tackling the COVID outbreak that's currently in the northern city of Xi'an. The country, who is gearing up for the 2022 Winter Olympics in February, has seen a rise in COVID infections since December 9. 
Officials reported 63 new coronavirus cases over the previous 24 hours, bringing the total to 211 over the past week. Restrictions to going out is limited to only one person per household every two days, on which they are only allowed to buy essential goods. Transports are suspended and checkpoints have been installed on motorways into the city. Most outbound flights from Xi'an airports have been cancelled and non-essential businesses are also closed, while local government employees are mandated to work from home. Officials did not mention whether the outbreak is caused by the Omicron variant, but state media reported that Xi'an city is facing a dual epidemic. One, due to coronavirus, and the other is hemorrhagic fever, a natural epidemic, and a common seasonal disease in northern China. Marielle, with Beijing Winter Olympics just a few weeks away, China has once again imposed its strict zero-COVID strategy using mass testing and a lockdown with duration that is still unknown. Mariel? Thank you, RK Yorka reporting live from Thailand. The United States has authorized the first COVID-19 oral treatment for people aged 12 and over and those at risk of severe illness. Maeve and Dog will tell us why live. Yes, Maeve, please go ahead. Marielle, Pfizer's antiviral pill called Paxlovid showed nearly 90% effectiveness in preventing hospitalizations and deaths in high-risk patients, as it retains its effectiveness against the Omicron variant. The emergency authorization issued by the Food and Drug Administration on Wednesday came as the country continues to battle a surge in COVID-19 and Omicron cases. The pills are to be taken as soon as possible after diagnosis of COVID-19 and within five days of symptom onset. Senior scholar Amish Adalja at John Hopkins Institute for Health Security said the two key issues are that supply will be limited in the coming weeks and that the drug's optimal use requires prompt diagnosis, which may be hindered by continual COVID testing problems. The U.S. government will have over 250,000 treatment courses available by January and is expecting to receive the 10 million courses it has ordered within six months. Marielle? Thank you, Mavian Dog, reporting live from Australia. Meanwhile, France has cancelled its order of the Molnupiravir COVID-19 antiviral pill developed by Merck's, becoming the first country to do so. Paul Gatalian will tell us the details live. Yes, Paul, good evening. Ariel, 50,000 doses of the Merck's Molnupiravir antiviral pill were ordered by France in October. However, after witnessing the unimpressive and underperforming qualities of the pill in clinical trials, the French health minister Olivier Véran announced the cancellation of their order. The results were released in November, reporting that the Merck's pill was unexpectedly less effective, contrary to the assumptions prior to the trial. It was seen that it was only 30% effective in minimizing hospitalizations and deaths of high-risk patients. Despite this, it is expected to be approved by the Food and Drugs Administration (FDA). In comparison, Pfizer's Paxlovid pill was seen to have performed effectively during clinical trials, being 89% effective in reducing death of high-risk patients and hospitalizations. The Pfizer Paxlovid COVID-19 antiviral pill will arrive in France before January ends next year, though it has not yet been decided by the French government whether the pill will be available over the counter. Marielle? Paul, do both Molnupiravir and Paxlovid pills work the same way? Well, Marielle, despite both being antiviral pills, they do not actually operate the same way. Instead, they use different mechanisms where the Molnupiravir alters the genetic code of the coronavirus by sending errors in the virus, whereas the Paxlovid inhibits enzyme production which is needed for the reproduction of COVID-19. Marielle? Thank you, Paul Gachalian, reporting live from New Zealand. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. And those are
are the reasons behind the news December 23, 2021. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Makakasama na yan na dyan yung uh, hindi mo na sila magdi-disconnect agad-agad dahil hindi mababayaran yung bayarin ngayong Desyembre at hanggang Enero. So sa pag-iimplementa, sila na ang uh, maaaring magbigay uh, ng detalye niyan sa kanilang consumer. Pero basically, that will be relaxation of the disconnection policy and at the same time, yung payment na hindi mababayaran on time, bayaran in a later time without penalty and interest. Effective pala po yung barangay at barangay, ang ginawa po ng Jensang, 26 barangay, 26 rin ang vaccination site nila at meron pa po sila ng mga mobile vaccination site at meron din po tatsin lang tatlong vaccination site. We need to prepare for the Omicron as soon as possible and we should not uh, let our guards down, no? Even though medyo low yung cases natin ngayon and we are very thankful for that. Blanket booster programs are likely to prolong the pandemic rather than ending it by diverting supply to countries that already have high levels of vaccination coverage, giving the virus more opportunity to spread and mutate. It's important to remember that the vast majority of hospitalizations and deaths are in unvaccinated people, not unboosted people.